being here today. I think um, we, we uh, often wonder what happens in March with our spring breaks happening, so we're, we're glad to have a nice crowd today. We want to thank the Monon Center as well. They've worked with us. We've had incredible attendance the last few months, and we have worked with the Monon to adjust our uh, food offerings in the morning so that we can stay within our budget but still offer those refreshments. So um, thank you for being patient with us as we, we uh, work with that again, to deal with our increased attendance, which we're very grateful for. I'm Helen Meckin, I'm your chairperson for HAMCO this year, and I also want to thank our team who puts together these meetings. We have an outstanding group of volunteers who work all year long to present the programming that we, uh, that we put on to get you to come and to learn something new, to have a, a different viewpoint presented, and to hear from our experts in our, uh, different parts of our industry. We have a few announcements today. Uh, if you didn't, did anybody not get an index card when they came in? Okay. Um, yeah, Mary has extra ones here. In May, our topic is Stump the Expert. We are looking for your ideas or uh, an overview of a transaction or situation that you've encountered in your real estate business that was quite complicated. This can be any topic related to, to real estate. However, we're thinking uh, inspection-wise, perhaps warranty-wise, perhaps uh, possibly lending-wise, but really unique situations that were tricky. Maybe you got through it, maybe the deal fell, and we're, we are going to have a panel of uh, industry experts in those lines uh, in May, and we're gonna try to see if we can work through some of those situations. So please fill those out. Um, there'll be people collecting them or on your way out the door as you leave the meeting, and we'll be doing this next month as well. So if you think something, or feel free to email me in the meantime, my email address is, um, is easily found online. Um, our next announcement, too, we've been asked to share some information about an information session tonight at 5.30 at Carmel City Center. It is being presented by the Hamilton County Leadership Academy in cooperation with two other groups about funding mass transit. This has been an interesting topic, a hot topic recently in the news and in our government. So if anybody would like to attend that, it's at 5.30 tonight at City Center in Carmel. We are very excited to also announce and share the details about a special event we're having in April. It is, has been dubbed Hamco Detours for a Good Cause, and it will be held on April 17th at Detour Restaurant in Carmel. That is located at Main Street and the Monon Trail. This is a fundraiser, um, but it's also a chance to network, enjoy dinner, bring your family, bring your colleagues. If you haven't been to Detour, they've got a great menu, and it is a family-friendly location. 10% of all of our checks that night will be donated back to the Realtor Foundation, and through the generosity of some of our local businesses and the work of our team who's organizing this, there'll be a, a couple of surprises, giveaways, um, and or small auction items, and any of those funds will be directed toward the Realtor Foundation. So again, that's April 17th at Detour Restaurant in Carmel from 5 to 7. And we'll send an email out, uh, email reminders about that in the next couple of weeks. Okay, one other thing. We do have a calendar change coming up at the end of this year. If you recall, last year in September, we had our Sell Our Cities event. It was a huge, um, hugely attended, hugely popular event that we held here. Um, we were at capacity. In fact, we were probably beyond capacity that day. So we have changed the date um, in order to accommodate a larger space. And that's going to be on September 12th, and it'll be at the Ritz Charles. It'll be a morning format. If you recall, we had our local mayors speak. We had different organizations, both from Hamilton County and the north side of Indy, uh, because we, we do this in partnership with Northside, including uh, representatives from Broad Ripple, the Fort Bend Redevelopment Commission, and then Fishers, Noblesville, Westfield, et cetera. So September 12th, we'll continue to promote that that, that date has changed because the calendars um, have the old date. Okay. <laughs> Well, why we are here today, our topic is how can the rental and property management markets be a successful part of your business? And the tagline on the emails that went out, untapped income, I know as realtors we all like that. There's a lot of different viewpoints to this particular topic, and so we have a great diverse panel on that. I'm going to start first by allowing them to introduce themselves, and then we'll get into um, how, how they've incorporated rental and property management into their business. So if you would just take a minute. Hello, I'm Phil Landy with Remax Legends. Hello, I'm Shannon Wright with Kirk Realty Group. 
And I am Jake Johnson with Kirk Realty Group. David McCoy with Tucker Mortgage. And uh, Mike Taylor with Red Door Real Estate. So how we want to start, because all of you have incorporated this topic differently into your business, um, is take a few minutes and talk about what first led you to agree to work with rentals. Um, if you run property management, how that works. If you are a property management company, how are you realtor friendly with that client? That's a key one, I know for many of us. And if you work with renters um, or list rental properties, how do you do that and make that profitable? Um, most of us here probably dabble in it. We don't do this very much. So your insights and how you got started and how you made it profitable and worth your time and your effort, that's key. That's kind of what we're looking for. So take a few minutes. Um, I think we... Back in 1979, some of you are probably still in elementary school, I started my career and my boss told me, you need to manage these for me. So that's how I started. What I have found over 30 some odd years is there's a lot of money in property management. It's really nice to have a paycheck every single month. What I do is twofold. One, I do sell investment properties. This gives the investor an opportunity to say, hey, I don't want to have to deal with these people. I just want the money. So I take care of that and I profit from that. I do a lot of work for other realtors like you. Not necessarily REMAX agents. I've worked for agents at C21, from Prudential. I have a special agreement. There's really not a lot of money to pay a referral. But what I do is I guarantee that when the people are ready to sell, it goes back to you. I will not take that listing. And that has done a lot for those agents. Number one, sometimes there's a property that they can't sell. So they need to get it filled. The people need to be able to pay their mortgage, so they need to quit paying the other mortgage. And that has been profitable for them, and in turn, very profitable for me. Um, keeping, keeping payments coming in uh, is not an easy thing to do. There are times you have to go out and chase folks, and uh, not a fun part, but it is part of it. Over the years, I've, like you, I've had a number of different people that I have trusted to do a variety of different things. And I use them as my maintenance crew. Unlike some of my associates up here who have their own, uh, I use independent contractors and I have found that to be very beneficial. Um, what else did you guys want to know? Uh, the, Shying away, I was asked about this, shying away from rentals because they only pay 10% of the first month's rent. First of all, as realtors, we all know there is no given fee of what anybody gets. And 10% is by no means the way it always goes. A lot of times, if you're really working for your client and your goal is property management, I've given away a lot more than that. And the goal is to get the house full and to manage it. I do end up, a lot of times, if it's my own listing, when somebody wants to sell, they're more than happy to sell on contract, which since I started in 1979, contracts were the way we had to do business in the 80s because there just wasn't any bank money at 15 to 21% interest. So I manage that for them as well. 